Bringing with it the brand new Savage Tier for Endwalker patch, 6.0.5 patch notes are out, and with that I'm going to be doing this video which is a super condensed summary of the job changes with this patch. We're going to be starting off with a Scholar, and the Scholar is getting a change that I've been wanting for a very, very long time, which is where Fey Union's range has been boosted from 15 yards to 30 yards, and this helps me a lot with my frustrations, my personal frustrations as a long time Scholar player, in that the abilities say during the second extreme fight that we'd see tanks moving around during that adds phase just making sure that they didn't tether onto certain crystals and that would essentially break the tether very often especially that use case um and the fairy would just sit there locked and not even casting embrace point is big help to making me and i'm sure many others want to use fae union more next up is going to be the summoner that got ponzi increases to fountain of fire by a whopping 90 ponzi and then brand of purgatory is up from 180 to 240 so a 60 ponzi boost undeniably this will help out the summoner a lot since they get that 60 second interval swapping between Bahamut, Phoenix, and then the other three summons in between those two, and this just really helps Phoenix not feel way, way worse than Bahamut. I know a lot of people were hoping for spell speed changes here and talking about drift, unfortunately we are not seeing anything of that in these patch notes. Third up is going to be the dancer that has had standard finish, technical finish, and Tilana changed from abilities to weapon skills, so that's going to be their big dancing abilities, which I am going to be a bit hesitant to make any claims on what exactly we're talking about when it's the change from these being abilities to weapon skills before I test it in game. But generally speaking, weapon skills are on the GCD and are impacted by a lot more buffs that explicitly state something like the next weapon skill is going to be buffed by whatever, such as if you take the Machinist's Reassemble ability that they pair with their drill weapon skill that's a very classical combination of that. So full ramifications of this change for the dancer context, I will be checking out when the patch is live though. Now for the monk, we are seeing a lot of lines here, but all that they have to do is with the fact that now you're going to be getting your chakra or nadi, nadi? I don't know how to pronounce them, my apologies, even when you miss a target as you're casting those abilities. So it's not going to be the biggest, most radical set of changes because a lot of people don't even think about accuracy these days. But regardless, it will help when you miss a target from say a status affliction in uh, Palace of the Dead or something like that, or heaven forbid a savage mechanic we're about to see. Currently I'm tempering my flashbacks to slotting accuracy in mass on healers. Boy, I did not want those flashbacks. Dragoon is next up and got a flat out potency buffs to Wormwind Thrust by 50 potency. Gerskogol by 10 potency and Nastrond by 10 potency, and I tried to say those right but I probably failed. But while those numbers aren't super wild when taken in isolation, considering the frequency that they're going to be casting these abilities, this will add up to a, a healthy buff for sure. Next up is the Samurai getting its big spenders, its Hingan Banna and Setsugeka range boosted from a 3 to 6 yards. That's it. It's just a simple quality of life change to make sure that they get it off during a cast. Now it is poor, poor Reaper, and honestly this doesn't surprise me at all given Arcane Crest is up every 30 seconds and was absolutely pumping the healing numbers as a DPS. The healing potency has been reduced by half. Yes, half. So now it's from a 500 potency total heal when you add up all the tricks to the party every 30 seconds, now down to 250. Now don't get me wrong, I am still going to enjoy that every single time that it's going to be cast. It's still going to be great, but it's more in line with what you'd expect and doesn't completely make things like the dancers curing waltz just seem bad. Which I'm not going to admit, I kind of thought about that before. I'm like, wow, this makes improvisation and curing waltz not look that great. Ninja's next up and had a lot of people worried going into these notes, and so the changes are going to be that Raiton is getting a minor text change in the status effect of being Raiju ready, lasting 30 seconds up from 15, basically giving more flexibility in its usage. On the note of Raiju. Forked Raiju has had a big potency boost from 400 to 560, so that's a 160 potency boost, making it significantly better to cast. Fleeting Raiju now has had a very interesting set of changes which I'm... I'm just gonna go over and have everyone form their own thoughts. So first up is the range was reduced from 20 yards to 3 yards, which they added players will no longer rush to the target when they execute this skill. So the dash of this was removed, and I'm certainly gonna say that I'm not a big fan of that. I will never be a big fan of that kind of change, but I'm waiting to hear from more people before I personally make my own final verdict, but my first impressions is 
Ouch. As a trade-off though, now's potency was raised from 450 to 560 potency for a 90 potency increase in total. Now for Ninja's Bunshin ability, now the Phantom Kamitachi ready status no longer expires when Bunshin ends, which instead is going to be a 45 second period buff that you can use any time during that 45 seconds. It's going to just be a charge. Likewise, that's going to lend to more flexibility when you want to use it at a particular time, and that's going to be a significant quality of life change in that now the Bunshin Bunshin skill itself changes to become Phantom Kami Itachi, so on that same button it changes. So now that extra keybind that has basically been slotted into that other one, so you don't need to worry about two keybinds, it's the same keybind now. And I am actually a huge fan of that kind of change. After playing Ninja, it did feel a little wonky myself to have a random finisher for the Bunshin off on some different button. It's kind of like when they changed Scholar's Seraph with Constellation being consolidated onto the same Seraph button, it really just made it feel a lot better. Now Phantom Kamitachi doesn't cost a stack of Bunshin, so you don't need to worry about, say, holding onto a charge of Bunshin or anything like that. But this is really something that makes sense because when Bunshin ends, you can use Phantom Kamitachi, which is what we were talking about in that last change. Also, the Ninki change, the Ninki gauge gain for this ability is at 10, but that isn't actually a buff, as they highlighted very clearly in red, but rather they explained that it's two separate five Ninki gauge earned at two different periods of time, and they're just consolidating those into 10 acquired upfront. So really this is just tying it together within the bunch and changes. So I think that this might be a mixed reaction to the ninja. There is definitely some quality of life increases. There are potency increases that were very much needed. Uh, like the two Raiju abilities needed more potency. There were a lot of people saying don't cast some of these just because it didn't work out. And we did see that. But I'm really not sure about how the loss of the dash is really going to go. And so yeah, thank you all for tuning in onto this video. Those are going to be all the job changes that we are looking going into the Savage Patch. I know that there are a lot of things that a lot of people were looking forward to. Um, I will speak at least in my personal expertise zone right now on Sage Scholar and the Healers. So the first thing that I wanted to see would be consolidation of the Asts, um, what do you call it, the Lady of Crowns, Lord of Crowns draw to be now the play button on the same button. I kind of get why they didn't do that so that you could have a rolling cooldown, but I still kind of... I wish that there was some kind of way to make an internal rolling cooldown. I don't like having that as a separate button. Another change that I really wanted to see would be Sage having some kind of spender for their abilities, because right now just throwing Draw Cold just so that I can get the 7% MP recovery doesn't feel great. Really with a Fey Union change for Scholar, I have <laughs> very little that I can complain about on Scholar. I think that it is being really done up really nicely. Obviously we want more DPS skills, that's not necessarily going to happen anytime though. Developers made it clear this is how we want to take healers and considering ultimate prog on Scholar, I don't know if we necessarily want that to be more complex, but I digress. I think what I really wanted to see as well going into my like secondary mains is I really wanted to see Dark Knight get a little bit of a barrier boost, just a little bit. But we haven't seen how it performs in Savage Raids, which obviously Dark Knight still has the strongest, best tank buster uh, ability in the game. Yes, it will not recover its own HP well, but it sure as hell is going to survive them. Another thing that I kind of was curious about was maybe Gunbreaker. I was kind of hoping that we would see the duration of the buff change to be like 25 seconds to make sure that you could just more comfortably fit everything into that buff window. Actually, on that note, maybe Blood Weapon for Dark Knight change it to be like charges. But I digress. That is probably a better off as a different video. Take care, everyone, and happy patch.